Jesse, welcome to the show. Thanks for joining me. Hey, what's going on, Mike? Excited to be here. Thanks for inviting me on. A hundred percent. I've been looking forward to this. I had the, uh, we were chatting a little bit before we pressed record. I had the opportunity to learn from you through a mastermind with our mutual friend, Cole. And um, it, I, I'm not just saying this because I'm interviewing you and I'm trying to blow smoke. Like it's probably the one that I quote to my clients the most because the stuff you talked about with culture and I'm sure we'll dive into that. A lot of the tools that you shared was really, really cool. And I guess I shouldn't be surprised building the organization that you have, like culture is probably pretty dang important. So um, (laughs) we'll dive into all the above, but for people that maybe somehow don't know who you and you are or who you, who you are, uh, give us the spark notes, you know, who you are, where are you coming from and what are you doing now? Mike, you're aging yourself. Okay. Spark notes, you know, come on, man. No, I'm kidding. I remember when I got through high school. Out, actually. So yeah, back when I was like in middle school or something, but anyway, uh, so my name is Jesse Lee and I am just a serial entrepreneur, but I'm the number one network marketer in the world. And that has allowed me to not only create business in 41 countries, which is pretty neat, uh, but it's also allowed me to become a really successful investor. I also own a bunch of traditional businesses. I have this huge social media brand. I love to speak on stages, which is why I found you. I was teaching at Cole Hatter's Mastermind. Uh, and that was so fun. I really enjoyed that, actually. Uh, but, you know, that's that's me kind of in a nutshell. I live in Frisco, Texas. I'm a dog mom. And I'm, I'm just very, I love that this podcast is about, you know, being really focused on growth because, I really am a growth focused individual. And sometimes things I say, I don't know if trigger is the right word, but I'm very direct a lot of the time about it because yeah. people want the seek the secrets to success and they, they don't understand that you really cannot continue to be the same person you are or have the same people around you that you currently do to get to the next level. So I don't know. I'm I'm fun, I'm happy, I'm full of love and energy, and uh I'm I love conversations like this. So probably like a lot. There's probably a lot about me that will get into but i guess that's my those are my spark notes (laughs) awesome yeah we'll dig into a ton but first the most important uh what kind of dogs okay so i have wookie lee she's right here she's a pit bull she's deaf yes she will not be doing much uh during this except for potentially snoring um so we'll have to just fix the audio (laughs) and then uh, my boy's right here he's half sharpay so he's a sharpay mix whatever 100 percent perfect in every way that's my kumba charles so and yes they have double names because i'm a crazy dog mom i'm not a normal dog mom so that's okay if it's I mean, if you have a pit bull and you're a crazy dog mama, I will approve. My favorite show, like my dream as a kid was make a lot of money, retire young and open a pit bull rescue foundation. Oh, I love it. Yeah. Oh. My like my favorite show was pit bulls and parolees. I knew you were going to say it only because you started saying that. I've never seen yeah. an episode, but I really feel like that would be up my alley. So yeah, it's, it's awesome. Um, that's probably why my fiance and I hit it off so quickly because I obviously used my dog to close the deal. Of uh, course. But yeah, single men pay attention. Hello. You know, yep. women and their dogs, very important. 100%. So that's, that's super cool. Um, and I, I love that. What I'm really excited because I think your profession, at least like the fact that you're the number one network marketer in the world, like that side of your business world, I think is really cool because I think it's a misunderstood industry. Maybe you agree, but I spent like five or six years in it and sucked at it, but learned a ton and it helped me build a foundation and build a lot of amazing relationships. And I look at, I look at some of the most successful people in the entrepreneurial world in like in the people that I came up in this entrepreneurial world with the ones that are winning the most all have a background in some sort of direct sales and network marketing. Really oh, I love that. that you said that. So I wrote down, I sucked at it and I learned a ton. <laughs> okay. Because not everyone's going to be good at it. And then you mentioned that you learn relationships and it's yeah. interesting. I really want to talk about this for a second. <sighs> like the amount of actual successful business people that when they find out that I cut my teeth in network marketing to make my first, I don't know, 15, $20 million dollars. None of them look down on me. Every single one has something complimentary to say like, holy, oh my God. Like I could not do it. I I wanted to punch everyone in the face because all these lazy people, how do you deal with the lazy people? You are so much nicer than me. Oh my God, your patience. Oh my God, how do you deal with this? How do you deal with that? Well, like 
every single, every single last one, whether it's Cole or whether it's Dan Fleischman or whether I, what I could, I could listen to Brad Lee. I'm thinking of like really close friends of mine, Ryan Stuman, you know, uh, Bedros, all these just monsters in business that find out, Hey, yeah. Like I started in network marketing. They're like, girl, <laughs> you are a different breed. You're yeah. a different breed. And then taking that, like you said, you learned a ton. I've taken all the, I shouldn't say all, almost all of the principles from direct sales and network marketing and, and, and applied them into traditional businesses. And the yeah. business concepts are good. The business concepts are universal. And so if you understand business, you understand why network marketing is superior to start with for sure anyway. And then to then yeah. transfer that the skill sets into other stuff. It's just like, so yeah. I love that you said that. I love it. I love it. Off to a good yeah. start. I mean, there's so many, so many cool relationships that I have, I would never have without like kind of getting my teeth kicked in for half a decade. You know, like one of my, one of my mentors to this day was the CEO of the company I was with. Right. And he's built a billion dollar company, <laughs> you know? So um, it, it is, it is a really interesting industry, but it's so wildly misunderstood and I'm sure we'll dig into so much of it. I think, I mean, I guess you could, attach that to all of sales in some capacity, but, um, how did you get started in it? Let's, what's some of the backstory as you were starting to build the, uh, I guess now massive empire that you have, like, what did some of the early years look like? How'd you get involved? Yeah, really fast. I just want to say you're either people that are anti-sales threat. Like, I don't understand you because you're either selling something or you're being sold to. And until you can get your mind wrapped around that, you're always going to be a victim. You're always going to have issues with people that succeed. The only way to really accrue wealth is to learn sales first and then scale from there. Uh, but at any rate, we'll, we'll probably come back to that. But uh, so I, I got started because I needed an extra $300 a month. You know, this wasn't supposed to be anything fancy. I have the college degrees. I was working in a pathology lab. I hated it. Uh, but I was doing what, you know, the good girls do, you know, you go to school in America and then you get your good job and you have your benefits. And my family was so proud. You know, my mom's like, she's got this good job. My daughter's got this good job at a lab. I got this bad. You know, my aunts and my cousins and my grandparents, everyone's like, oh, Jesse Lee got the good job. And Oh, the good jobs sucked. Good jobs don't, pay well, you know, good jobs yeah. are terrible. Good jobs. You're, you're constantly overworked and underpaid. And as soon as I started doing well in the job, even though I was a bad employee for the record, but if I did something well, it's like, Oh, good job. Here's more work. And I just, I hated it. I couldn't stand it. And so then my rent was getting increased by $300 a month, which is a common thread right now. Right. So I love that this is coming full circle because now this is almost 12 years of entrepreneurship full time, but 12 years ago, you know, the, so this is 2011. So we've just gotten through this whole economic craziness of 2008, 2009, when I'm actually in college. And then, so the housing market was still doing weird things and whatever else. And so my rent's increasing just like right now, you yeah. know, there's memes all over the internet. There's funny little reels all over the internet. People are pissed off that their landlords are increasing rents by 300, 400, $500,000 uh, a month. Uh, I rent this, this penthouse I'm in actually. And I said, Hey, we signed a lease on May 1st. I wonder if we can go down there and we can say, Oh, we forgot to sign up for multiple years. Like let's get locked in, you know? So, uh, but not for financial reasons, but just because like, let's do, you know, let's be smart about it. But at any rate, uh, and so for, I, I needed 300 extra dollars a month and this is pre gig economy. This is pre, you know, Uber Eats, DoorDash, any of this stuff. None of that existed. Uber, yeah. Lyft, any of it. So the only way I knew at 22 years old that you could make extra money, I thought babysitting, you know, I'm like, what, what am I going to do? Ba like, I don't know how to, what am I going to babysit? Get a part-time, I can't even get a part-time one. I'm going to deliver pizzas. I don't really know. Yeah. Uh, and the, the person I was renting, the, I was living in a basement, actually, I was renting a, a room in a basement. And she said, uh, I don't know, try one of those at-home businesses. And I said, what? But I'm like, oh, what? And so it just threw me into this spiral then of, okay, well, if I'm going to spend money to buy this, this package or whatever, I've got to make that money back. And then I got to make the extra $300. And it just, quitting was just never in the cards for me. It was, it was either do or die. It's kind of like, I don't know if you saw, but on this vacation, I just went on, I hiked stairway to heaven, Austria. People should like, go look at what this looks like. You, if, when you make the decision to hike stairway to heaven in Austria, you have two options. Number one, you complete it. Number two, you die. And I know that sounds really crazy, but you can't quit. There's no going backwards. You're 
hiking into the abyss, literally up the side, the face of a mountain, you're, you're, you finish or you die. Mm -hmm. And I guess that's kind of how I am in life with everything. I'm just not a quitter. So in direct sales, I became, you know, the top of this company. I'm, you know, I'm a corporate trainer. I'm in people's homes, constantly selling products. And then I was presented a, a network marketing compensation plan. I'm like, oh, now I didn't know what passive income was. I didn't know what residual income was. I didn't know any of these fancy things that people kept talking about. I just knew that I wanted to make more money. And I knew that my leadership skills were not great, but they were developing yeah. slowly but surely. And so I thought, okay, well, if I can lead people and teach people and train people and mentor people and coach people, then I can also earn more money because I'm teaching you how to sell. Okay. So I'm teaching you how to sell. Then I can get paid part of, you know, commissions off of this because of my effort in teaching you how to sell. Yeah. What the hell? So joined network marketing yeah. 2015. Um, my first year in network marketing, I made a million dollars, took home a million dollars. Uh, and the, you know, it's just, it's been ever Whoa. since. Okay, that's a big first year take home. Um, most people would love to do that in their entire career. So obviously you had this like, no, like quitting is not an option mindset. What else do you think prepared you to have that insane trajectory? Like, correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think that's very common. <laughs> no, I am an anomaly. <laughs> Yeah. So, so anyone listening to this or like FTC or whatever, hi, I'm Jesse Lee and I am crazy. I work harder than everybody. No, no income claims, no guaranteed income. You have to work hard to, be, to get paid well. Yeah, yeah. Of course, of course. There's no income claims or anything like that. Um, I I don't know what book it is or who said it. Maybe you do. But I was told success loves speed. Okay. Mm. I was told success loves speed very early on. Yeah. And that knowledge is power and all these little like cute quotes, you know, if you want to, uh, if you want to earn more, you got to learn more. And then once you learn more, you can drop the L. Like I remember all these little tiny brainwashing things. Right. Yeah. Uh, and I just thought to myself, OK, so if success loves speed, I need to talk to more people. And so I was just the girl that if a, a coach or a mentor or somebody told me, hey, you need to talk to five people. I'm like, I don't want to talk to five then. I want to talk to 10, you know, or I want to talk to 20 or I'm going to talk whatever. People thought that they, I will never forget people. When I started transitioning stuff into the internet, they said, what are you doing? Why are you getting people to add you on Instagram? You know, this is like 2013, 2014. I'm like, I don't know. Posting like, you know, my, my workout photos on Instagram. I don't know. Just give me one to follow you, whatever. Uh, not even thinking really far into the future with it. Just I, I used to run this little raffle thing at my in-home events and I'd be like, I'll give you a raffle ticket. If you add me on Instagram, Snapchat, Facebook, send me a text message. And then my company had an app. So download the app. And then I would do this little raffle giveaway. I'm sure people could implement this at some, somehow in their business. I do. And it was like, I would give away something that was, that cost me literally a dollar, but now I had people being exposed to me all over the place. And some of these people still follow me, you know, nearly a decade later, which is pretty cool. But People then made fun of me. They said, what are you doing, you know, on Facebook? You know, you can't build a business on Facebook, nothing sustainable on the internet. And it makes me laugh because I, I'm, we're clearly similar age. You know, when your parents would say, don't get in the car with strangers. Don't do it, Mike. Stranger danger. Now we're like, don't get in a car with a stranger. Matter of fact, I'm going to summon the stranger to my house using an app called Uber. I'm not even going to look at their face. I'm going to sit on my phone in danger the entire time and hope and pray that Billy Bob takes me to my destination because I'm sure as hell not paying attention. You know, like yeah. times change. And I luckily thought, okay, I need more people. Well, where are you going to find more people? And I saw all these people joining Facebook, all these people joining, um, joining Instagram, all these people paying attention on YouTube or whatever and I just followed attention. And so I think that, I think for sure, more people is why I won so fast. And number two, I became very proficient at relationship building to the point of what you were saying. You're like, I was bad at this, but I learned how to build relationships. I just, yeah, I just cared about people more than people did. I, I remembered certain things. It's funny you mentioned Cole because I was talking to uh, Sonia this morning. That she was just, I was just talking to her because they just had Colson the other, she just had Colson the other day. Yeah, so awesome. And, Funny, Brad Lee just sent, um, Brad and Melissa Lee just sent them an edible arrangement. But like five days ago, she posted a story with the edible arrangement. Of course, I'm watching the stories because I like the baby. Uh, and she doesn't like, she only likes the chocolate covered strawberries. So I think it was the Sperber sent, uh, you know, Cody and Shannon sent just the chocolate covered strawberries. It's a weird example, but you'll see where I'm going with this. 
And then Brad and Melissa sent the edible arrangement with all the stuff on it. And they, she made a thing three or four days ago that said, I don't like the melons. Does anyone even like the melons on edible arrangements? Yeah, I remember. I like melons, so I don't know. So you saw it too. Yeah. And so I messaged her. I'm like, man, come on. Um, Brad, I'm gonna text him and be like, why did you send the melons? She don't like the melons. And she wrote back, she's like, this is why you're number one. Why do you remember that about me? You know, I know yeah. I posted it just the other day, but that's so crazy how your brain works. And so I, I I think I just, I've got to know people a little bit more than other people. I think I'm wired to care more than some people are. I also have a really, really good memory. So when you tell me something once, I tend to remember it. Um, and then, yeah, I, I hate to say it, but I work harder. I don't yeah. I work harder than people. You know, people want the the shortcuts to success. Uh, it doesn't exist. Yeah. That's that's one of the things that always intrigued me about network marketing. And I'm still curious about this to this day. And I, I'd love your thoughts on it. With Obviously, with your experience, what always was confusing to me was the public outcry around it. And we'll use like the words get rich quick. Nope. Like everyone ragged on the industry for being get rich quick schemes. But then those who enrolled got pissed that they didn't get rich quick because they didn't put the work in and then they quit and then they called it a scheme. So it's like this weird cycle that I can, I still to this day can't wrap my head around, but it's always perplexed me. But I guess that's just the human condition in some capacity. You nailed it. It's the human condition. The other thing is nobody likes taking accountability. Now, I don't want to say nobody because I don't like to generalize, but yeah. people do not like taking responsibility for their failures. They love taking responsibility for their successes. They yeah. hate admitting when they have screwed up. And so I love network marketing because quite frankly, it was the great equalizer. And all I mean by that is if I'm selling to you, or if I'm presenting a business opportunity to you, nobody asked me for a college degree. Nobody asked me what my age was. And I was 22, just making money, man. You know, uh, nobody asked me my age. Nobody asked me my credentials. Nobody asked me my religion. Nobody asked my race. Nobody asked my gender, whatever. Nobody asked my sexuality. Nobody asked me anything. It was work, get paid, but that's sales. And if you're yeah. sucking at it, it's because you don't have a strong enough skill set. So take some accountability for it. The people that quit and get all up in arms and do whatever, and it's a scam, it's a scheme, the 1%, the blah, blah, blah. There's a 1% in everything. Get over yourself. You're just never going to be part of it because you don't take accountability for your failures. Okay? Sorry to tell you about yourself. All right? Like, you're never going to be in the 1% with that attitude. When I'm bad at something or somebody's more successful than me, I don't look at them and I don't, I don't get pissed off. If you were yeah. sitting on this call and you're making $10 million a month and I don't make $10 million a month yet. Okay. And I'm not going to sit here and be mad at you. I'm going to sit here and go, uh, you're better than me at something. I need to learn. Okay. It's a mindset that most people just simply don't have. They're so fast to blame. They're so fast to shame. They're so fast to victimize. They're so fast to say, well, it's, yeah, it's because she's pretty. It's because she's pretty and young. It's because she's this. Oh, like, oh my God, it has nothing to do with anything. I could still, cl I could close deals on a phone, you know, like no face, no face, no case. doesn't matter. I'm just going to win. I'm just built differently. Uh, so I don't know what that's about, quite frankly, except for like you said, it's certainly the human condition to blame and shame and, and do this, you know, justifying of their actions and their laziness and then create videos on the internet about why it's a, you know, if they put as much effort into videos about why this is a scam or it, their articles they write on the internet or like whatever, let's submit article, let's submit stuff to the FTC. Golly, the amount of effort you put into that stuff. If you put it into a sales business, -wee, like you, yeah. that, that, would, that would be, uh, You'd be making some money. A hundred percent. If you don't like network marketing, start knocking doors. Like do something with that energy and you can make a ton of money. <laughs> right? But the reality is, and this is one of the coolest. So this is, I don't know what episode this will be. 230 something, right? Wow. Of those 240 ish, at least 160 of them have been interviews. Right. Everyone that you've named on the show so far has been on the show with the exception of Cody, but that will happen eventually. Sure. Like high level people that I've been very fortunate to connect with. The one of the most common threads, the most common thread amongst everybody is that every single one of the most successful people has some sort of direct sales background. Yeah. 
whether it was, I can't remember what Todd Abrams sold, but he was like selling computers door to door or like some book or something before he moved to Texas, like the Tanner Chidester in the fitness world. Like he was selling alarms in the hood. Like yep. everybody was selling something door to door, direct sales, network marketing, something. And they got their teeth kicked in for quite a while until they figured it out. You sound like you got your teeth kicked in less, but you figured it no, out or, I, or, or you just condensed it. Right. Yeah, Cause you worked I, so I hard. Think, and so fast. I think I, just detached so quickly yeah. from the outcomes. So here's here's why. Okay, to be fair, like talking about teeth kicked and whatever, that was my whole childhood. Mm. So my whole childhood was rough. My whole childhood was getting made fun of. My whole childhood was the kid who had nothing, who was like in the corner, couldn't go on field trips, couldn't do any of these things. Everyone, you know, oh, that Jesse Lee girl. Yeah, she's nice, but she's weird. You know, like, blah, 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 you know, uh, she, her family's strange. Her dad's in jail, all this stuff, right? So- by the time I decided to have any kind of sales uh, experience, like your no is not going to hurt me. I, I'm not going to think about it. You're yeah. like, I know what actual pain is. I know what actual struggle is. I know what it's like to be broke. I know what it's like to be just destroyed. So when so, when I'm what, I don't, I don't even think about it. If I say I'm going to have, a hundred no's in one day when you tell me no most people you tell them no one time and they go back to their coach and go mike they told me no ah! and then it takes them 45 minutes to pick up the phone again for me it's like oh okay all right jackie no okay sarah no okay all right mike no okay marjolene no okay nancy no okay sarah no okay julie no okay lynn it's a no no problem okay mel it's a no yeah whatever okay brad no okay cody no okay 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 and I read a book called Go For Now very early in my sales career. So I started attaching money to the word no. So I knew my average and it was very bad at first. Okay. Like <laughs> at first I was not, oh God, I was not a good salesperson. Okay. I had a lot to learn. And so it was like, I would get a yes for every, I'm not even kidding, probably 75 no's, right? I mean, it was bad. I really, really had some work to be done. And this is, you know, I'm a, oh God, so bad. So, but I kept looking at that, like, okay, let's say I make, I'm use, I'm not awesome at math. Let me use a better example. Let's pretend that it's a hundred no's. Okay. But let's pretend that I make a hundred dollars for every yes. Well, then instead of just getting excited about the one yes, I switched my mindset to say, okay, if it takes me a hundred no's to get my yes, well, then every time I hear a no, it's a dollar. So, oh, okay. 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 So, uh, Gustavo says, no, it's a dollar. Um, Gianluca says, no, it's a dollar. I don't know why I'm on an Italian kick. Giorgio says, no, it's a dollar, you know, like boom, dollar, boom, dollar, boom, dollar. And also then I didn't get as excited about the yes. So it was like, mm -hmm what's a lot of people do in sales is they get their, their yes, they make a thousand dollars, they make whatever. And it's like, Whoa, hey, I got my chest. They get all hopped up about the yes. And then they like take so long to celebrate that they don't go right back to the grind. So my pace was just faster than everybody. And I didn't care that the door would slam in my face. The person would say, this is a scam. Or the person would say, I don't want any of those products. I can get them cheaper on blah, blah, blah. Or somebody like all of the reasons that they told me, no, I just, it was like a men in black almost. Okay. So Mike's telling me, no, like, let me just like erase my own brain really fast. Next, next. Okay. Yeah. Next, next. There are billions of people on planet earth. And even when I could only sell in America, I'm like, that's hundreds of millions of people. When people go, oh, I can't find four leads. I'm like, I don't know. Open your front door or something. Maybe you're just not cut out for entrepreneurship. I'm going to be the one to tell you that you can't find four people, five people, 10 people, a hundred people go walk the street. It might sound crazy, but these people you're talking about Tanner or code, it, you know, whoever, it doesn't matter if the teeth kicked in and the whatever that makes them so strong. Now, you know, that's yeah. the crazy thing about sales is you want the failures because you appreciate the success a lot more when you've had all those failures and you remember that. And now I have story after story after story where when somebody's new and struggling, I'm like, oh, I know. I know why you're not making sales. Mike, you suck. 
right now, but it's okay because I really sucked at first. It was like yeah. seven five no's to a yes. I remember that. You know what you need to do? You need to learn and you need to earn. So you need to make sure you're doing some personal development immediately implement it. Don't just get sucked in a rabbit hole of personal development. Learn some sales tips, go immediately and try to implement, get back to me and let me know how it works. Try it on five people. You know, now we can work. Now we can yeah. try something. But if I was good at the beginning, I would not appreciate where I am now, where now my closing ratio is quite scary. You know, now it's like, yeah, good luck. Like if I want to close you, you're, you're wham, fine. bam, thank you, ma'am. You mind. Let's go. Um, but it comes with time. And so people, they yeah. want to make money really fast, but it, ugh, no time. This is not get rich quick. It, sales in general is not get rich quick. Just to go back to that really fast. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can make it quick, but it's going to be a freaking grind. I mean, a 100%. grind. There's so many cool parts of that answer that I, I just want to highlight. Like, number one, you talked about getting really high on the yeses. And <clears throat> I love that you talk about the window to going back to work because that's a huge piece. The second piece, I think, is also that because people take so long, number one, they lose their momentum. But number two, then when they have to rebuild it, they end up getting way too low. Right. Yeah. And they're just stuck in this crazy pendulum that yeah. is just slowing them down because they're constantly rebuilding. Whereas you were already going faster to begin with, and you didn't lose those chunks of time from the celebrations, um, which is really, really cool. Uh, you mentioned detaching from the outcome, which I want to move to in a second. But before we do, you briefly mentioned how your upbringing prepared you and the nose weren't painful. Yeah. At what point in your journey... I'm going to make an assumption here and I'm going to assume that you have this belief now and correct me if I'm wrong, but at what point in your journey did you realize that that was a blessing? Yeah, no, I can tell you the exact day. <laughs> I, had a feeling, I, yeah. I don't want to say I was a victim. You know, I don't think I ever necessarily had that mentality, but I never appreciated all of the stuff. Um, and when you're in it and everything feels painful, I think it's really hard to appreciate the stuff yeah. um so i yeah i don't i don't know that victim's the right word but it was like i would be capped at a certain amount of income or a mindset or whatever fill in the blank and instead of uh, uh taking again kind of accountability for it i would say well yeah but it's because of whatever it's because of whatever it's because of whatever mm -hmm. and i was at an event so go to events go learn you know speaking of somebody i met in a mastermind so hi uh, but i went to an event and tony robbins was there and he's talking about trading your expectations for appreciation and i don't know if you've ever heard this before or if any of your listeners have but it is a complete mind mind flip it's taking all of the stuff that sucks about your past and realizing it is exactly why you are who you are today. And this isn't even just in business. Okay. So I use it as an example of why no's don't bother me. I mean, I've been told, I was told no my whole childhood because we didn't have money. So you can't ask for stuff. The answer is always no. Yeah. Um, but uh, it's everything. It's like, for those of you who feel like you have horrible parents, you know, well, you know, I would be different if my dad were, were were there. I would have been different if my mom was a better mom. I would have been different if I didn't get beat as a child. I would have been different if I had this, that, if, if you know, these traumas didn't happen to me. Okay, you would be different, but you wouldn't be as good as you are. And so he's having this conversation. He's like, he's having this conversation with somebody whose father actually abandoned her. And he said, you realize that you're such a good leader because of how bad your father was at being a father like you would never leave somebody behind that's the lesson you learned so stop having expectations of what a father is supposed to be and understand that he taught you how to be a mother he taught you how to be nurturing he taught you how to be patient he taught you how to be kind he taught you how to not leave tough situations he taught you all of these lessons and I sat there and I did not cry Mike I ugly sobbed so hard because I kept using my childhood as the reason why I wasn't breaking through certain plateaus in my life, not understanding. No, that's why I'm such a good leader. Yeah. You know, like my mom being the way she was 
is the reason I am the way I am with a lot of stuff with money and with, with being driven and the way that I handle relationships. And there are so many gifts inside of that. So some of us just need to flip our mind and stop ma making everything an excuse. You know, somebody broke up with you. Okay. What are the blessings inside of that? Somebody cheated on you. What did you learn? You know, your, your, your childhood was awful. Okay. But are you giving a better childhood to your children? See, you wouldn't give maybe such a good childhood to your children if you didn't have such a bad one. And it's all attached in business too. And too many people just think, oh gosh, well, really good people make really good people. If that were true, then why do we talk about trust fund babies who are given every single possible thing, some of the worst humans? You see, you got to start trading expectations for appreciation because yeah. your childhood that maybe was terrible is why you're a good adult. I love that. I was, <clears throat> I think it was this morning. I might've been like sitting in a jacuzzi after my workout. Somehow I was watching Ed Milet's, uh, one of his like latest clips. And I guess it's from his new show that he just launched, yeah. but he put a clip and it was like one of the reels that he recently posted. And it was him sharing that exact quote. And um, that's so freaky. Yeah, yeah <laughs> it is. But it, it's, it's one that I hear often. And I think because it's so freaking important, like, are we going to use everything that happened to us as the reason that we'll never get what we want? Well, I don't know, maybe, but that sounds pretty freaking miserable. So we might as well appreciate it, take the lessons from it. Because to your point, all those examples you just used, they created the urgency right? Like that was the reason that you took all that action to create this new opportunity and this new lifestyle for your children that you didn't have growing up or whatever the example is, like it prepared you for it. Right. And, and what I always found is, I don't know, I, I think it's always in those lower moments. Like whenever you're in your lowest lows in your life, it, I always find that gratitude is one of the most powerful, like forces, like grounding forces. And that's the easiest thing to be grateful for. My buddy, Ricky Mendez is like the biggest gratitude dude of all time. And he like, he'll like, he has like a gratitude poem. And he's like, I'm grateful for the screaming baby on the plane because it means that I can hear. And all these like types of things that like people will look at you and be like, that's a ridiculous belief, but it's true. We just neglect it. So which story do we want to empower? You that's know, super powerful. I really love that. Yeah. Perspective, yeah, perspective is everything, you know, a hundred percent, a hundred percent. Um, you mentioned, I can't remember what part of your answer right there just made me want to segue to this before getting to detaching from the outcome. But I remember you sharing, I don't know if it was like, or something you put on your story or on a reel, or maybe it was a clip of you speaking. I don't think it was at thrive, but you mentioned, uh, it, it's essentially about being you, mm -hmm. right? You mentioned this story about the, one of the first times you were speaking on Eric Worre's stage and you were talking about your leg tattoos and like getting permission. Can you, can you tell like the, that story and talk to me about how you got to this point of fully stepping into you and like really embracing that appreciation instead of an expectation around how you had to show up or who you had to be to be successful or in the eyes of somebody else? Yeah, sure. So I don't know if I'll tell the same story, but there's so many lessons inside of all of that. My stories are wild, by the way. So <laughs> we were like, oh, I'm going to go to her stories now. They're like, what the hell? Uh, but that really is where I'm certainly, you know, like my most authentic. You get to see different sides to me and a lot more of my real personality there. So uh, it's interesting you you mentioned that. So Eric is is my my mentor and he has changed my life in so many ways. I'll forever be grateful for him. I always joke around with him. I'm like, even if we have a huge fight, like if there's a huge fight, I end up hating you and you end up hating me, I will still speak gratitude and love upon you because you have changed my whole life. And uh, that's what a good mentor and really good coaches do. You know, it's like that moment where now it's not like he tells me everything to do. It's not like he controls my life, but he gave me, he planted that seed that exploded inside me. So, uh, yeah, so I was going to speak at the first, for my first time at MGM grand, which is a really cool experience. If you're somebody who wants to be a speaker or is a speaker and you're listening to this, it is definitely one of those goals places. Uh, you walk out, you're where they fight the fights, well, you know, in the ring and you're literally there and you walk out and it's everything you think it would be, you know, you're, you're looking up at a stadium. That's just, <sighs> lined with people. It's so cool. 
And so I was very excited, but also I was nervous, you know, it was my biggest stage ever. And I just said, Hey, I respect you so much. You're my mentor. You know, you've guided me through a lot of stuff. And I just want to know, like, how, how do you want me to dress? And he said, I don't really understand the question. <laughs> I said, well, you know, like my whole entire right side of my body pretty much is tattooed. So uh, do you want me to wear, like, do it, does it need to be covered, et cetera, because I want to be respectful of everything, respectful of you. He's a totally different generation than me. Right. And he said, Jesse Lee, I just want you to be you. I want you to show up as you. And it was almost like that little bit of permission that some of us need to just step a bit further into your authenticity. And I walked out, I wore a romper on stage, which was the first time I ever put my leg out. So um, my whole leg was out and tattooed and like, it was like a shorts romper thing. So, it, and I mean, you could see the looks on people's faces, like, <laughs> you know, like, hold on a minute, you know, like, wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. everyone's polished and in perfect, you know, gowns or I don't know, suits and ties and just, and then I come out and my, my hair had these crazy side braids and just very, very me. And yeah. that was one of the first times, but certainly not the last time that I, I watched people shift. You know, what we do as humans, unfortunately, is we do judge people. Mm -hmm. first impressions do matter Jim Rohn is also one of my mentors and he said I'm not judging you or no God's not judging you but people are judging you <laughs> <laughs> uh, like, Jim. Uh, but you watched people because people I mean it was I don't know 18,000 people or something these people most people didn't know me yet and mm -hmm. so they thought who is this hooligan on stage with this crazy tattoo and yeah. then I let my brain speak for myself and it was my first lesson in authenticity and attracting my people I'm not for everyone you know I mentioned my story some of you now are going to go what look at my story and you're going to what what the hell oh my god it, you know I might not be for you but then some of you are going to go well this is really refreshing I like this I, I like how real she is and that was my first step. My second really profound step in the, into authenticity that changed quite literally my entire life was uh, I read uh, Daring Greatly is the book by Brene Brown. Now, I don't agree with everything this woman says, but I read this book and she was talking about the word shame. And the people who are having a hard time listening to this and you're having a difficult time stepping into your authenticity, I want you to take a minute to ask yourself, where is that coming from? Like, where do you feel it in your actual body? because it's not coming from you. It's coming from somebody else that you're then internalizing. You know exactly how you wanna live your life. You know exactly the businesses you wanna run. You know exactly the jobs that you wanna have. You know exactly how you wanna raise your children. You know exactly who you want in your life. You know exactly who you wanna grow with. You know exactly what you wanna eat. You know exactly where you wanna live. You know exactly where you wanna travel to. You know exactly how you wanna travel. You know exactly the clothes you wanna wear. You know all the stuff about yourself. But somewhere along the line, you have continued to let people affect you. And the word you're looking for is shame. And I realized that I was also not, not only was shame affecting the way I was showing up, the dressing, you know, the way that I was dressing as the example of the stage with Eric, the way that I was showing up on social media sometimes, the way maybe I was doing my makeup, the way that I was working out, the way I was all this stuff. But even worse, I was noticing how it was affecting relationships. And if you want to know how you get to the top of stuff, you've got to really veto those relationships. Who is in your life if you're listening to this? And you, I am giving you full permission to cut people out. And, I, you know, whatever. Maybe, maybe that's a little aggressive for you. But if you're not growing and you call and we called each other friends, I don't even care if it's six weeks ago. And you're just not, or six weeks a little aggressive, maybe six months. And you're still not growing. There's a reason I don't text you back. There's a reason I don't call you. There's a reason I don't invite you to stuff. I'm done. I invited you to grow just like I invited everybody to grow. You didn't come. You can choose to come or you can choose not to come, but I have got to make sure I'm paying attention to who is in my life. And so I realized I did this a lot with relationships, not only friendships, which I was doing it with. I was, I was given like hall passes to everyone. Oh, okay. You're not pushing in your goals. No problem. Oh, okay. You didn't do the assignment. No problem. Oh, you're not, you know, rank advancing, even though you said whatever. Oh, no problem. Oh, you didn't do this. Well, no problem. And I was like, oh yeah, of course you can come over. Oh, but I was also doing it in my romantic relationships. And so I, I realized that I was, this is my, my last relationship. I was dating this Ukrainian guy. And the only reason I was still with him after probably the first two and a half, three months was because the internet freaking loved him. 
What a stupid reason to stay in a relationship. But there's people listening to this right now and you're literally still married because your family likes him or your friends like him, her, whatever. Or on social media, people are like, the cutest couple ever. Yeah. And inside you're fucking dying. Sorry, you can bleep me. Like you're dying. Your soul is literally screaming, get me out of here. And I'm reading this book and I'm standing in my bathroom in Frisco, different house, but standing in my bathroom and I'm just like, I'm not even living my life. I'm living the idea that somebody else thinks is perfect for my life. And I get one life. And I walked out, we broke up. He was all confused. I got on a plane to Italy and I didn't come back for almost two months. <laughs> and I just, and I mean, it was like, but it wasn't even just going to Italy and being a wild woman. It was, I said, I have been saying no to all of this stuff I've wanted to say yes to. I've been saying no to foods that I've wanted to eat, but like, oh, it's kind of weird. I've been saying no to glasses of wine when I would like a glass of wine. I've been saying no to going on boats. I've been telling people my whole life I don't like going on boats. Who the hell doesn't like going on boats? It was a control thing, right? I've been saying no to this and this and this and this and this and this and this. And so does everybody like me back to this? No. But do you know who does like me? Me. I really like who I am now. I really like how I show up. I really, really, really am living a super authentic, super genuine life. And if you fit into this life with me, awesome. And if you don't, it's okay too. I hope you are living your most authentic life, but I am done apologizing for being anything except for me. And as soon as I started just being very, very, very loud and authentic about that, it was like, people were like, where did you just get another hundred thousand followers from? I'm like, kind of easy when you're just being you that was probably the part of the interview where everyone's going to go back a couple mis- minutes and listen to it again and i think they should because i i think more people need to really embody that lesson um now i want to flip it and i want to talk about alter ego okay <laughs> because in a in an interesting way, I think at, at face value, a lot of people might look at that as almost not necessarily a contradiction, but very, very counterintuitive to what we just talked about. And this is something that I think you talked about this at, at Thrive Connect. But at the very least, I think we talked about it at Cole's house later on when we were eating Everbull. This idea of your alter ego and how you've built this to build your business and show up a different way. Talk to me about that. Yeah. First of all, everybody go buy Everbowl. Okay. It's delicious. And it's very so nutritious. Good. I wish there was uh, one in New York. No, I own a whole bunch. So let's go. All right. So, <laughs> you know, just like, <laughs> anyway, no, but uh, they are amazing. I just had one the other day, but anyway, yeah. So it's this duality thing. And I've been talking a lot about this lately and I forever will because it, I think it gives permission to people to step in again to actually who they authentically are, but understand that sometimes you have to preserve different parts of yourself uh, for different people, if that makes sense. So yeah. when I talk like this and I'm just having a conversation with you and I'm being clearly softer and you know we're just chatting like friends, this is Jesse Lee. So if you were to come hang out with me, like we did, and we were eating ever bowls, like I talked to you like this, I'm like, yeah, for sure. Michael, be on the podcast. No problem. You know, or, Hey, yeah. Like if you see me with kids or whatever, I'm soft, I'm feminine. I'm in flow. I'm just, this is me. I don't, this is it. You know, I'm not putting on a show. There's no, I'm not trying to attract anybody to me right now. I'm not trying to be big, bold and whoa, whoa. Uh, I'm not trying to capture anybody's attention or anything like that. I'm just being Jesse Lee. This is me. Okay. I also understand that. There is the masculine side of me, just like all of us have a feminine and a masculine side. I'm just speaking energies. I'm not speaking anything weird. Every single person has a masculine and a feminine side. My masculine side is my driver. She is psycho. That is Boss Lee. Okay. Boss Lee is a no holds bar, no holding back. I will rip your face off if you need me to. I will be super freaking loud. I will be in your face. It's time to put on a show. Like she's loud. She's crazy. Like I don't even know who she is. Like it's like on, it's like a drop of a dime. 
Like if I have to get on a stage, that's where the comedy comes out. That's where the loud voices come out. That's where uh, the weird voices come out. That's me on the internet most of the time. And so people that only watch me on the internet go, I think she's insane. No, 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 no. See, it's no different than Michael Jordan and Air Jordan. It is no different than Mamba and Kobe. It is no different than name any, uh, t- what is Tom Brady's thing? What does he call himself? I don't even know. Like just the uh, joke, that's just what he calls himself. Yeah. Like but whatever. It's no Tony different. Tony Robbins and Anthony Robbins. Tony and Anthony, right. Like every single top performer I know has this alter ego and it allows me to shut off too. It allows me yeah. to turn off where it's like, like if I'm going to coach you, you're going to get a lot of boss Lee. If I'm talking to you as a friend, you're going to get Jesse Lee. So then nobody's confused. Am I getting Jesse Lee? Am I getting boss Lee? Who's talking to me right now? It's still me, but sometimes I need to be in that masculine energy to get a point across. And then sometimes, sometimes I just need to slow it down a little bit, be a little gentle, be a little kind, kinder, a little more empathetic, a little bit slower, whatever. Um, but in, you know, I know it looks like I'm bossly all the time, but that's just because what you see on the internet, I'm bossly probably 10% out of the day and yeah. the rest of the time it's me. Yeah. Beyonce, Sasha Fierce, whatever, you know, Lady Gaga has a real name too. I just don't know what it is. Yeah. Uh, you know, like yeah. whatever. Um, but everybody has this, it, it's, it's inside you. I would just encourage people to actually let more of it out. It, mm-hmm. it, I just wrote a cash about this the other day. I actually, I said, bossly got me here. Cause she's the attractive thing. She's the one that makes you hit follow. She's the one that you're like, Whoa, Holy smokes. That's okay. She looks like what she's talking like, what she's doing this after the coaching's crazy. You know, that's what makes people hit follow. Jesse yeah. Lee keeps you here. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Keeps you. <clears throat> what I love about what you just shared is the beginning. It's like a- almost like a permission to step into a part of you that you're suppressing. Right. Yeah. Cause it's not like you're being inauthentic. You're just unleashing a different part of you that doesn't get to come out all the time. And what I think and what I really appreciate about, about you, Jesse, is I think a lot of people we hear we hear these big speakers say like, oh, I'm really introverted. And like I say this as well because I am very introverted. Well, I'm extroverted, but I have introverted tendencies. That that's not important. But <laughs> you, see, you you hear all these things, right? And you're like, you see Bossley on stage, you're like, there's no freaking way. There's no way. No way she's actually introverted. But then that Everbowl conversation, we're sitting in Cole's living room or whatever it is when they clear out all the furniture. And I'm like, wow, okay, like you're telling the truth. Not that I thought you were lying, but I wanted to experience it. I'm like, wow, there. this is this is Jesse Lee. This is so interesting. And you get to see how the two play together to create this massive conglomerate that you've built, which I think is really cool and I want to acknowledge you for. Thank you. Um, before I ask you the last question, I've been saying three times I want to go back to detaching from the outcome. So I'm going to ask you this really quickly sure. and then we'll get you out of here because I want to respect your time. Um, you mentioned, and I think this is any sales or network marketing story in general, you get into it because we need money, yeah. right? We need something. But you have this skill and this superpower to connect with people and put people first. And most people, we even though we all understand that that's how you sell, right? It is by serving people. That's very hard to do when you need money. It is very hard to release that energy, detach from that outcome and show up fully in service. And I need to know how you do it or how you did it. Because now it's once the circumstances shift, everything shifts, right? But in those early stages that I feel like that's the hardest part. So what did that look like for you? And and maybe it was just second nature, but I'd love to know. Yeah, it is difficult. You know, money is a huge stressor when you don't have it. And you think it's really important when you don't have it. And then when you do, you realize, oh, all those people with money were right. <laughs> yeah. So it's really true. Here, Here's the thing. If you really want to sell more in general, you have to understand, yes, people. But really, what I'm saying you have to understand people is you have to ask yourself. The question really is, what am I actually selling? Like People need to write that down. What are you actually selling? And so I started realizing that if I would pay closer attention, people would tell me everything they actually wanted. So like, just slow down for a second and listen. I'll use the example of, uh, well, I'll use my teeth as an example. Okay. I don't know. Like I bought the teeth. Okay. They didn't sell me the teeth. 
I don't know if people understand what I'm trying to say, so I'll explain it deeper. The feeling. They, it's the feeling. They were like, oh God, you're going to be even more confident when you have these teeth. Like you're beautiful, but it's going to be different. I'm like, really? Okay. Oh yeah. When you're on stages, cause you talk all the time on camera, on social media. I mean, it's going to be totally different. I mean, you're just going to want, you're going to be talking with your mouth open more. I mean, you're going to be radiating. Really? Yeah. Yes. I see it all the time, all the time. You're probably going to book more gigs and stuff, more stage time, just because you're not even going to think about it, but you're just going to, you're going to be different, Jesse Lee. I was like, I am me. And this is like three months ago. I was already a badass, you know, in this, they sold me on this. They sold me all the different things attached to it. And so I know I definitely had a bit of that that scarcity. There's just no way I didn't. And for sure, I was pushing people away with my commission breath. You know, I definitely had commission breath. But then I started slowing down and saying, what am I actually selling here? You know, and to be totally honest, I mean, I don't know if you know this, but my first company ever, I was actually selling romance products. Okay. We don't really talk about this this often. I'm not selling romance products. I'm selling the idea of a better relationship with your partner. I'm selling the idea of no more boring sex. I'm selling the idea and the dream of, hey, if you want to be married to this one person forever, if that's what your sexual template is, well, then you better be a little freaky. You either freaky or divorced. Okay. That's just how it is. Like I'm selling this like so much more. I'm selling the confidence. I'm selling the excitement. I'm selling the, all this other stuff. It's just what they're buying was the product. And so, uh, yeah, I think it just, it's just slowing down a little bit, mm. you know, listening a little bit more, uh, understanding again, you suck for a while. Uh, one of the most important things I learned was, uh, personality types. If anyone's listening and you're really bad at sales right now and you can't figure why you can't close anybody, figure out the the personality types. Some people need to have all the details. Some people need to have all the aggression and the success and the whatever. Some people want to have fun when it comes to being sold to. Some people want to have all the emotions, you know, the, the confidence. Ooh, 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 okay. Uh, all of these different things. <clears throat> That's how uh, it all started. But really, I mean, if I could just tell you guys, it, it really does get better. <laughs> you know? Like you're going to push people away for a long time, but don't give up on, on it. You know, learn the new skill set. I think one of the best things anybody can do is, is learn uh, skill sets over and over again, but the, the outcomes, they come. It's a numbers game. It's why I told you at the beginning, success loves speed. It just, mm -hmm. it's just a fact. The more people you talk to, the more opportunities you have to learn, the more opportunities you have to grow, the more opportunities you have to polish your skills, the more opportunities you have to not trip over your words. Just is what it is. But, uh, I wouldn't worry so much about it. And don't get too excited over a new salesperson you think is going to be amazing or a new opportunity you think is going to be amazing, a new investment that you think is going to be amazing. That would be attaching to the outcome again. Just mm -hmm. attached to the process. What am I learning? How am I growing? How am I getting better? What, you know, what are my takeaways from this? What am I going to do differently? So there's opportunities to grow and learn in everything we do. Just too many people are so attached to the fact that I didn't close. Oh, I didn't, I wasn't convincing today. No, you just go through that conversation again in your head. Where did you get off track? Just learn. If you're learning, you didn't lose. Mm -hmm. If you're learning, you didn't lose. Boom. Where do you hang out on social? Where can people get connected with you? I'm Boss Lee on Instagram. Where else? Plug away. Uh, Instagram is my best. It is I'm Boss Lee. Only one profile. Okay. There's all these scammers and hackers and whatever. So let's be so stupid guys. Um, it's the same on TikTok, but this is a business podcast. So I'll just say on TikTok. I'm a little weird on I'm boss Lee on TikTok. <laughs> you want the business stuff? Boss Lee Biz is my business TikTok. And there's tons of really awesome TikToks uh, that you can get quick, quick little clips if you need some inspiration and stuff. That's just Boss Lee Biz. Facebook's Jesse Lee Ward. Uh, and the best way though, if you want to DM me on Instagram, is is there on the I'm Boss Lee. And then if you need if we need to take the conversation to email, we can. If you need to book me for something, we can, but I can just send you everything through uh, Instagram. DM is the easiest. Perfect. Guys, that'll be linked up. Show some love all that fun stuff. Give some follows. Jesse, the last question I have for you. Yeah. Going all the way back. Mm -hmm. You know, I guess we could start at your childhood, experiencing what you did with your, in your childhood, then realizing you needed the 300 bucks, getting involved in network marketing all the way to where you're at right now. And all of that growth in between, right. Yeah. Making a million in your first year and however, being the number one network marketer in the world with businesses galore, this entire window, 
What's been the biggest lesson that you've learned that has yielded the most results and had the biggest impact on your life and in your business? So easy. It's just people over profits. You know, if you want more money, you got to care a lot more. Put the people first. The profits will come. Boom. Jesse, thank you so much. I really enjoyed this. Thank you. I had such a good time too. I do have to run to another call right now, but you're amazing. And I'm so thankful that I met you at that mastermind. Likewise. Take care.